This episode from the life of Sherlock Holmes will be transmitted to our men and women overseas by shortwave and through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Petri Wine brings you Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The Petri family, the family that took time to bring you good wine, invite you to listen to Dr. Watson tell us another exciting adventure he shared with his old friend, that master detective, Sherlock Holmes. Well, right about now, you're probably taking a little breather in your last-minute rush to get everything ready for the big day tomorrow. Children have to be put to bed to wait for Santa Claus, and there's the tree waiting to be decorated, and four million and one things which must be done before morning. I sure hope you got all your Christmas shopping done. It's pretty hectic rushing off at the last minute to take care of Uncle Charlie or Aunt Bertha or Cousin Sam. But if you must get something... Just remember that you can always dash over to your wine merchant and get a bottle or two of Petri wine. Or better yet, a whole case of Petri wine. Petri wine's a swell gift, and I just thought a little last-minute suggestion might be of some help. And now I'm sure our good friend Dr. Watson's waiting for us, so let's go in and join him. Come in, come in, come in. Ah, uh, there you are, Mr. Bartell. Oh, say, Doctor, I can see you're going to have yourself quite a Christmas. <laughs> Big tree in the corner with colored lights on it. Where'd you get those? Table covered with presents? You must be mighty popular. <laughs> they aren't all for me, my boy. You see, I'm having a Christmas party tomorrow for my housekeeper's little nieces. Oh. I'm going to dress up as Santa Claus for them. <laughs> well, I'm sure you look very convincing in the part. Oh, by the way, Doctor, I, uh, I brought you a little present. Ooh, Here it is. I hope you'll like it. <laughs> I know you, Mr. Bartell. I got one for you, too, here, Summer. Oh, you, you uh, mustn't open it until tomorrow. Here, here, I'm a boy. Thanks a lot, Doctor. And uh, now, how's about tonight's story? Last week, you told us you'd chosen an adventure with a lot of Christmassy atmosphere. Yes, Mr. Bartell. My story begins on another Christmas Eve many, many years ago. To be exact, in 1886. At the time the adventure occurred, I must confess I didn't quite understand what was going on myself. In fact, I never did uh, quite make head of tales of it until, until Holmes took pity on me later and explained the, the whole thing. But I shan't try to confuse you, Mr. Bartell. I'll tell you the story exactly as it happened. Right you are, Doctor. Let's go. Very well. On that Christmas Eve in 86, I was standing in our Baker Street rooms, dressed in the costume of uh, Santa Claus. Holmes, his long, thin fingers pressed together, lay back in an armchair and gazed at me quizzically, while our housekeeper, Mrs. Hudson, stood by the door and... Uh... Oh, Dr. Watson, you make a grand Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't he, Mrs. Hudson? <laughs> Try the beard on, Watson, old chap. I'm afraid this is going to be a little uncomfortable. Uh, uh, how, uh, how does it look? <laughs> oh, you look just like the old man on the Christmas cards, Doctor. <laughs> yes, Watson. It really becomes you. <laughs> the cheery twinkle of the eyes, the ruddy complexion, and the, uh, the appropriate girth. <laughs> what a shame we can't obtain some snow on a sleigh and reindeer for you. However, I'm sure Mrs. Hudson's nieces will be very much impressed. Well, they will that, sir. And it's very kind of you, Doctor, to offer to come over to their house with me. Oh, no. With father in the hospital and my sister at his bedside, it would have been a very miserable Christmas without me. Oh, I shall enjoy myself, but I think I'll take this beard off before we get there. Uh, that's it. Are uh, you ready to leave, Mrs. Hudson? I am, sir. Uh, will I get a cab? How far do we have to go? Oh, Lexington Gardens, number 28. It's just off the Edgeway Road, Doctor. Well, it's not far, but bearing in mind my costume, I suppose we'd better take a cab. Aye, sir. I'll get one. Holmes, what are you going to do with yourself? I hate leaving you alone on Christmas Eve. Oh, don't worry, old chap. I shall spend a profitable evening writing on my new monograph. Well, what's this one about? An analysis of teeth marks on pipe stems, with particular regard to indicated character. Oh, gracious me, how exciting. Well, 
I must be going. <laughs> Don't forget your sack of presents, old fellow. No, no, no. Uh, when you come to distribute them, you'll find that I took the liberty of adding a few trinkets on my own behalf. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you, Holmes. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Holmes, but there's a gentleman to see you. Says he's an old friend of yours. Here's his card, sir. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's Lord Whittacombe. Splendid. Ask him to come up, please, Mrs. Hudson. All right, sir. And I hope your party is a great success, Mrs. Hudson. Well, thank you, sir. Are you sure you don't want me to stay uh, now that you have a visitor? Oh, no, 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 no. Indeed, no, Mrs. Hudson. I can show the gentleman out myself. You go off and have a good time. Thank you, sir. Well, I wonder what Lord William wants. Perhaps I should stay. No, no, please, a... my dear fellow. Certainly not. Well? Yeah, you far more important work to do. Well, he can probably want his revenge at chess or something equally innocuous. Off with you, my dear fellow, and enjoy yourself. Oh, I'd better go. Just the same, I wish you were coming with me. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. I shall be there. Uh, come on up, Whittacombe. Hello, Holmes. Oh, evening, Watson. You make a very convincing Santa Claus. Are you leaving? I'm afraid so, Lord Whittacombe. Well, good night, then. Uh, good night, good night, sir. How are you, Holmes? All alone on Christmas <laughs> Eve, eh? <laughs> yes, Whittacombe, I'm glad you came over to see me. Mm-hmm. What's it to be, an evening of chess, or have you unearthed some recent treasure of medieval pottery that we can discuss? Neither, Holmes. I've come to you in your professional capacity. I... I need help. Oh, 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 come now, Whittacombe. Don't tell me that after all these years of quiet friendship, you're going to become a client. Yes, I'm afraid so, Holmes. Though I doubt if my problem will, problem will interest you very much. It's hardly up to your uh, uh, rather colorful standards. Uh, care for a cigar? Oh, thanks. Ah. Well, now, my dear Whittacombe, what's your trouble? Well... I decided this year to have a little Christmas party at my townhouse. I'm quite comfortably off, as you know, and it occurred to me that I have several relatives and friends who are not as well off. I'm having a party for them tonight, Holmes, and I hope you'd attend it, disguised as uh, Santa Claus. Oh, my dear fellow, I've adopted many disguises in my time, but Father Christmas has never been one of them. Why do you want me to attend your party in disguise in any case? You ashamed of your friendship, uh, a private detective, or um, do you consider my features more acceptable when buried beneath the depths of a snowy beard? Oh, my dear Holmes, do take me seriously. I'm not joking, I assure oh, you. Of course you're not, of course you're not. You, uh, you want me to attend your party in disguise. Why? I'm giving some very valuable presents, uh, diamond and onyx cufflinks, uh, mm-hmm. platinum and ruby earrings, and, and such like, and I've wrapped each of the presents in banknotes. Oh, dear me. Uh, where are these presents now? In a sack. In charge of my butler. I was going to dress up as Santa Claus and give them out myself. Until I got the warning letter. That's why I've come to you. Warning letter, eh? Yes. I received it by this evening's post. Listen to this. <clears throat> my dear Lord Whittacombe, your generosity with Christmas presents borders on ostentation. We do not approve. Neither we receive 5,000 pounds in sovereigns at post restaurant. Box 379 by 6 o'clock on Christmas Eve, or I'm afraid your Christmas party will be conspicuous by its absence of presents. Let me see that note, Whittingham, will you? Yes, here we are. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Plain paper, torn from a penny notebook. The writing is obviously disguised. It... By George, yes. Whittingham, I accept the case. I'll come with you to your party at once, and furthermore, I shall follow your suggestion regarding a disguise. Dressed as Santa Claus, I shall be less likely to attract suspicion. I'm delighted, Holmes. But uh, what made you decide so suddenly? This writing, my dear fellow, this writing. Oh, it's uh, in a false hand. I'd know that characteristic M in my dear Whittacombe. I've seen it too often at the beginning of a signature. Moriarty. Moriarty? Who's he? Oh, one of the cleverest and most unscrupulous criminals in England. Whittacombe, there's no time to be lost. It's, let me see now, 6.30... Half an hour down the deadline given you in this letter. We must go to your house at once. This is as far as the card can take us, Doctor. Oh, here you are, Cabot. Here's five shillings for you and a Merry Christmas. Oh, bless you, Jenny, and a Merry Christmas to you, too. <laughs> uh, you said you wanted to get into the house through the back way so that you could surprise the children. Yes, I thought well, I'd I tend to thought... come down the kitchen chimney. Oh, you can get to the back of the house by going up the alley here. I'll go in the front. Splendid, splendid, Mrs. Hudson. Which is the house? Number 28. It's the third one down the alley, Doctor. I'll have the back window open in no time, and you can slip in without any of the barons seeing. Very well. A gloomy little street, I must say. 
Well, where's the music coming from? Oh, it's from that temple across the street, Doctor. The disciples of the octagonal square, they call themselves. What on earth do you suppose that means? Oh, some newfangled cult. Heathens, most likely. Oh, hello, hello. I'm not the only Santa Claus abroad tonight. Look at that fellow across the street over there. Oh, dressed just like yourself, Doctor, and carrying a sack, too. Oh, he's running up the steps to the temple. Thanks, God. He, he slipped on the ice. Oh, I wonder what his hurry was. Here, here, my man. Oh, oh, oh be careful you up, now, sir. Doctor. Dinner not trip for yourself. Here you are, sir. Give me a hand. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Felly of me, wasn't it? Oh, we Santa Claus have to help each other, you know. Up you come. That's it. Woo! Oh, me. Doctor, I told you to be careful. Oh. Now you've fallen, too. Oh, it's this confounded red coat of mine. It, it tripped me up. Oh. Did you hurt yourself, sir? No, 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 no. I'm all right, I think. Uh, oh. How about you, sir? Well, uh, I'm all right, thanks. Oh. Silly of me to run, wasn't it? Uh, here's your sack, sir. Oh, thank you. Good night and uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, uh, good night, same to you, sir, same to you. Oh, he went into the temple. Must be a disciple of the octagonal square. You're sure you're no hurt, Doctor? No, no, of course not, Mrs. Hudson. Give me my sack, please. Thank you. Your sister's house is the third one down this alleyway, you say? I'll hurry and open the back window. Yes, I'll be waiting for you, Mrs. Hudson. <laughs> this is going to be rather fun. What a shame Holmes isn't with us. Oh, well, he's probably happier having a good game of chess with Lord Whittacombe. This is my house, Holmes, number 39. 39 Thompson Square, eh? And dear old Watson is just around the corner in Lexington Gardens and hasn't any idea that I've left Baker Street. Yes, uh, here you are, Caddy. Uh, thank you, sir. A uh, Merry Christmas, sir. Uh-huh. Listen to that. Carol singers. Yes, we'll probably have our fill of them before this evening's over. Good evening, my lord. Have the, have the guests arrived, Hargreave? Most of them, sir. They're in the library. You brought another Santa Claus with you, I see, my lord. Another Santa Claus? What do you mean? The gentleman arrived three quarters of an hour ago, sir, dressed as Santa Claus. I took him to your study, my lord, and showed him the sack of presents. Confound it! He's got here before us. Where's this study? This way. I hope I didn't do wrong, my lord. You told me that a gentleman dressed as Santa Claus would be coming here... Dear me, the gentleman appears to have gone. Yes, and the sack containing the presents with him. But he can't have left the house, my lord. I, I've been watching the front door. Yes, and while you were doing that, he slipped out through the window here. The catch is undone. Hargrave, describe this man. Well, I can't tell you much about his appearance, I'm afraid, sir. He was dressed as Santa Claus, just like yourself. But I did notice one thing about him, sir. Oh, what was that? He lisped, sir. It was quite pronounced. Of course. Lou the Lisper. Who on earth is Lou the Lisper? One of Moriarty's most trusted accomplices. Fortunately, though, I've had news of him lately through my underworld grapevine. You, uh, you know where he lives? He is reputed to have some uh, connections with a new cult that calls themselves the Disciples of the Octagonal Square. Their headquarters are just around the corner from here. Let, let's go there at once. Of course, and Hargrave. Yes, sir. Get a message to Scotland Yard as fast as you can. Ask for Inspector Lestrade and tell him to join me at the Temple of the Octagonal Square in Lexington Gardens as soon as possible. <laughs> Oh, the children are awful excited, Doctor. I told them you just came down the chimney. Oh, I'll slip the beard on and then I'll go into them. There we are. Will I announce you, Doctor? Yes, yes, please, Mrs. Hudson. All right, sir. Oh, 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 now, children, quiet. Uh, Santa Claus has come to see you, and he's brought you all presents. Oh, oh, <laughs> hello, hello, children. Oh. Hello, Santa Claus. My name's Elsie. Did you bring me a present? Oh, I, I did, Elsie. I look in my sack in a minute. And, uh, what's your name, young man? Herbert, they call me Bertie. Did you come down the chimney? Yes, Bertie. I bet you had a time doing it. You're so fat. Oh, <laughs> don't be rude, Bertie. Santa Claus won't give you your present. And what's your name, little man? Maya, though. I've got a cold. Yes, I see you have. Uh, well, children, gather around, men. I'll see what presents I got for you. 
No, he's a birdie. The uh, first present is for... Oh, can't be right. It says for Her Grace, the Dowager Duchess of Beulah. Oh, do you suppose Mr. Holmes has been playing a practical joke on you, Doctor? I suppose so. Well, I can't see the point, Miss Holt. But he did say that he'd added a few trinkets of his own. I want my present. Then supposing you take this, Elsa. Oh, good. Thank you. And this one is marked for the Reverend Arthur Carter. Okay. You what Holmes is up to. Uh, uh, here you are, Bertie. True, thanks. And this is for you, Arnold, because you've been a, a good little boy. It's very big, is it? I wanted the dog. Oh, wanted the dog because me. Well, I'll bring you a dog next year, Lionel. Oh, it's a Dr. Dog. Watson. Uh, yes? Uh, oh, look at the wrapping on these presents, Dr. Weather. Twenty pound notes. It's cut. Oh, oh, look what I got. Now, let me see. Why, uh, cufflinks and diamonds and onyx. What's uh, ones and I'm very much mistaken. I got the pretty earrings. Look how they sparkle. Let me see. I'll see. Oh, good gracious, I swear that these what are platinum rubies. What in thunder's going on? I want my earrings back. Give me back mine, too. Well, 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 well here, here you are, here Dr. you are. Dr. Watson, what do you suppose has happened? I don't know, Mrs. Hudson. Perhaps my toys are still at the bottom of the sack. I can't understand it. Oh. I wish Holmes were here instead of dozing in front of our fire in Baker Street. <laughs> Where are you, Holmes? Here by the bed. This is the only room in the temple that gives any signs of having been lived in. I think our bird has been here, but I'm afraid he's flown. If Inspector Lestrade will get here, strike a match, will you, Whittacombe? Right. Uh, here's a candle on the table. Oh, just as I feared. Look on the bed. A red coat and a beard. Yes, Lou, the lip has discarded his disguise and gone. And with him, I'm afraid, your valuable presence. No, wait a minute. Here's a sack lying on the floor. Oh, no, this isn't mine. Look what's in it. A toy dog, large box of chocolates, little girl's dog. What in thunder? Well, this is Watson's sack. But how on earth could Lou the Lisper have got hold of it? Somewhere, somehow, he, Watson must have made an accidental change, and Lou the Lisper is no doubt trying to track Watson down at this very moment. He must work fast, Whittingham, or my friend's life and those of Mrs. Hudson and her relatives won't be worth our tinker's damn. <laughs> Now, Doctor, you can't break off your story there. Oh, yes, I can, my boy. Before I go on, I thought we'd have a glass of port just to <laughs> freshen us up. Oh, well, that's <laughs> that's something different. Of course. Instead of talking about port, as I sometimes do, it'll be nice to drink some for change. There you are, my boy, and a, and a Merry Christmas to you. The same to you. And now, what happened next, Doctor? We left you at the children's Christmas party and Sherlock Holmes and Lord Whittaker around the corner at the Temple of the Octagonal Square. Yes, Mr. Bartell, although at the time, of course, I had no idea what was going on. There I was, cheerfully handing out gifts worth, well, if not a king's, at least a baronet's ransom. While outside the Temple of the Octagonal Square, Holmes and Lord Whittaker were talking to Inspector Lestrade at Scotland Yard. In a nutshell, let's try it. Yeah, it seems to me, Lord Whittacombe, you'd have been wiser to get in touch with Scotland Yard when you first got the warning note. And we could have nabbed him when he came to your house and pinched the sack of presents. Mr. Jarvis, no time for post mortems. We've got to reach Lou the Lisper before he finds Dr. Watson. You suppose he can do that, Holmes? It wouldn't be difficult. Lou the Lisper is nearly as clever as his master, Professor Moriarty. The chances are that you were followed when you came to Baker Street tonight, Whittacombe. It's equally likely that Watson and Mrs. Hudson were followed as they left it. Moriarty seldom leaves anything to chance. Well, where did Dr. Watson go tonight? At Lexington Gardens. It's just around the corner from here. Well, then let's go there at once. Fight not quarry away. No, 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 Mr. Arden. We must use a little subtlety. Now, Lou the Lisper wishes to recover that sack of presents from Watson. How would he invade the party with the least possible trouble? By, uh, by dressing up as Santa Claus again? No, no, I think he's overplayed that role for one evening. Well, then how would he try to get in, Mr. Holmes? Oh, come now, Lestrade. What group of people can enter any house on Christmas Eve without invitation and without creating suspicion? The carols. Exactly, my dear fellow. I shouldn't be at all surprised if at this moment Lou the Lisper and some of his gang are singing carols outside 28 Lexington Gardens. Well, then what are we going to do? Form a rival choral society. How many of your men did you bring with you? Three. A sergeant and two constables. Wearing greatcoats? <laughs> yes, Mr. Holmes. But why? Look. They can hide their helmets and pretend to be singers. Come on. 
Let's go over there, and while we're walking, we'll rehearse our carols. We must appear reasonably convincing. Saint Geray, Lestrade, Saint Geray. <laughs> You mustn't make Santa Claus too tired, lad. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Hudson. Hop on, Lyle, hop on. Oh, oh, oh isn't that Can't nice? Can't they come inside and sing for us, Santa Claus? Yes, of Claus? course they can. Ask them to come in, Mrs. Hudson. Oh, all right, sir. Oh, come on, let me get on your back, too. Oh, now, now, take it easy. Oh, there we go. I want to see your reindeer, Santa. Oh, see my reindeer? Oh, dear boy, they're up on the roof. Oh. I'll climb up and see them. No, 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 you mustn't do that. They're asleep. Oh, here are the carol singers. Off you get, children. There we go. That's it. Now, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, and Merry Christmas. Would you like to sing some carols for the children? After that, I'm sure you'd like a drop of <laughs> some of the warm up. Well, thank you, sir. We should like that. Uh, haven't I uh, met you before somewhere, my man? Uh, no, sir. I'm sure you haven't. Uh, come on, man. Let's sing Good King Went for Good King Went Let's no doubt on the feast of tea. We are outside the house, Mr. Ohm. Now watch. Shh, shh, shh. Listen. Uh-huh. Lou the Lisper and his men are already there. Are we going in now? In a moment. Now, men, you will have your truncheons handy. Yes, Mr. Holmes, we're ready. Splendid. Now, remember, when we're inside and I yell, Christmas, at the top of my voice, you bring out your truncheons and get Lou the Lisper and his gang out of there as quickly as possible. Don't arrest them until you get them outside again, Mr. Hard. I don't want to frighten the children. Right, you are, Mr. Holmes. We're ready. Just give us the word and we'll go in and get them. How about something to warm you all up? That won't be necessary, Dr. Watson. See to the door, Sammy. Now, all of you, stay right where you are. Who are you? What do you think you're up to? Please don't be difficult, Doctor. All I want is the jewels out of my sack that you stole from me tonight. If you try and stop me, I shall have to hurt you. <laughs> Why do you talk so funny? You got a cold like me? Shut up. Now, Doctor, where are the jewels? Oh, curse it. There are some more carol singers outside. Why don't them to go away, Lou? No, better let them come in. If we don't, they might get suspicious. All right, Lou. I should know what you're up to. Now, no tricks, Doctor. If you try and give an alarm, I shall have to get rough with oh, you. I don't mind about that, but just remember that there are children present. Hiya, oh, yeah, Manny. Yeah. You're all here before you, eh? Uh, what you say? We all join a little carol for the nippers, eh? Uh, well, uh, all right. Uh, w w what What do you want to sing? Eh, man, up the old angels sing, eh? All right, all right. Uh, come on, man. Let's sing. you later, old chap. Lestrade! Yes, Mr. Holmes? Uh, take them to Scotland Yard and prefer charges. I'll be over in a little while and give evidence. Right, you are, sir. <laughs> too bad we didn't catch Professor Moriarty, too. Well, at least we have some of his cohorts. I'll see you later, Lestrade. I wish I knew what was going on here. Is Moriarty mixed up in this business? Yes, Watson. I'll tell you all about it as soon as I've straightened this thing out. Now, will come? Yes, Holmes. The 20-pound notes that you used as wrapping for your gifts seem to have been scattered all over the house. Uh, do you want me to recover them, too? No. From what you've told me of the children, I think their parents could use the money much more profitably oh. than my relatives. In any case, I can replace it. A very generous Christmas gift. Well, children, did you enjoy the uh, little game we staged for you? It was enough fun. Yes. <laughs> I nearly died laughing when they started hitting each other. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it, children. And now I, uh, I want you to show me the presents you received. I got these pretty earrings. Oh, they were a part of the game, too. A nice little girl like you doesn't want silly earrings, Elsie. Here's a beautiful doll for you. Cool. Her eyes open, chest, and everything. Oh. 
And what did you get, my little man? These. Oh, cufflinks. Good gracious. Who wants cufflinks when he can have a, a clockwork train? You want to exchange? Train, Lord, love a duck, yes. I wanted the dog. There's one for you, Lana. A nice, nice woolly dog. Oh, oh good. And here's a Lovely. nice... Here you are, Julie. Here's a nice big box of chocolates, too. You can all share them. Oh, <laughs> Lummy, what a night. Oh, I ain't had as much fun since Granny got her finger stuck in a plug <laughs> <laughs> I still don't understand what's going on, Holmes, but I, I must say this has all the earmarks of, of being a happy Christmas. Yes, oh, oh, oh. Mrs. Hudson. Hi, Mr. Holmes. Uh, how's, the, um, how's the turkey coming along? Oh, it'll be ready in a few minutes, Mr. Holmes. Splendid. And, and while we're waiting, perhaps the children will oblige with something we haven't heard so far. Yes, Mrs. Mrs. I, I know what you mean. A Christmas carol that really sounds convincing. How about it, children? All right, sir. Come on, Elsie. Come on, Lionel. Doctor, that was really a, twelfth, a swell story. On a Christmas Eve like this, do you ever wish you were back in Baker Street celebrating Christmas there? At times, yes, but actually, Mr. Bartell, I'm, I'm very happy right here in my little home. There on the table is a beautiful little Christmas tree. There's a fine fire in my fireplace. My two dogs, Monty and Willie, are, are sleeping peacefully at my feet. And best of it all, I've got the love of every child in the, in the neighborhood. Yes, I got a great deal this Christmas Eve. Lots to be thankful for. And what with the troubles of the world on their way to being settled, it looks as if this is the brightest Christmas that, that I've ever had. Well, that's how I feel about it, too, Doctor. I hope that all our friends listening in are just as happy this Christmas Eve as we are. And speaking not only for myself, but I know for all of us and for the Petri family, too, we wish every one of you a happy Christmas from the bottom of our hearts. God rest ye merry, gentlemen. Well, Dr. Watson, next Monday is New Year's Eve. What story do you plan to tell us? One that I think you'll find extremely appropriate, Mr. Bartell. It takes place in a Scottish castle near Edinburgh on a New Year's Eve in 1900 and concerns a pair of lovers, an elderly baronet, and a, a strange iron box that proved to be more than worth its weight in gold. <laughs> Tonight's Sherlock Holmes adventure was written by Dennis Green and Anthony Boucher and was suggested by an incident in the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle story, The Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle. Music is by Dean Fossler. Mr. Rathbone appears through the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer and Mr. Bruce through the courtesy of Universal Pictures, where they are now starring in the Sherlock Holmes series. <laughs> Petri Wine Company of San Francisco, California, invites you to tune in again next week, same time, same station. Sherlock Holmes comes to you from our Hollywood studios. This is Harry Bartell saying good night for the Petri family. For a solid hour of exciting mystery dramas, listen every Monday on most of these same stations at 8 o'clock to Michael Shane, followed immediately by Sherlock Holmes. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.